Hello. Hello, hello. What's All going right. on? Just got out of the sauna, huh? Yeah, rough day, you know. Yeah, man. What'd you say? Pet manicure, pedicure, sauna, rough day. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah, they, they did a number on my feet, too. I was like, sorry, it's been since, like, January, and the lady's like, it's okay. <laughs> they do the pigtails, too? Uh, yeah, that was special. <laughs> you know, you love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love pigtails? Awesome. Everybody loves pigtails. Yeah. So what was the occasion for the sauna? You said you got a shoot, or? What's that? What was the occasion for the Manny and the Petty and all that again? Was it a... I'm doing a talk on Saturday. That's, that's right. So if anyone who's on here lives in the Connecticut area, come on Saturday because I'm going to talk about everything that Eric and I handle when we work with clients and why that matters for uh, metabolism and fat loss and all those good things. So yeah, when I do live talks, it was like, you know, the whole prep, like the hair, the nails, the lat, it's all this bullshit that I didn't miss. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Stuff you didn't have to do when you're hiding in the house, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So we'll wait a couple minute or two, <clears throat> see if some people roll on, but. Hi, George. Um, <laughs> there we go. Dude, you're so tan. It's like not fair. Me? Yeah. Mm, I'm kind of lighter compared to what I get to be normally. I tan very easily. Very easily. So not fair. Yeah. Yeah, you're not Italian, so like. Yeah, I'm, I got that Mediterranean blood in me, apparently. I don't... Yeah. Hi, George. He's waving hi. All right. So welcome, guys, to Testosterone Tuesday. I don't know why my lighting's not working. It's probably why George is waving. Um, so today we're going to talk about baby making. Now we're <laughs> going to talk about preventing the baby making or what to do about it. So um, we'll start very basic. So a lot of people think that if they go on TRT, it automatically severs any capability that they have of becoming um, or being able to conceive or maintaining their fertility. And that, that comes up a lot. And I think if you want to explain, like, where does sperm live and how does it get, you know, through the penis and everything. So what, what is the process of uh, exogenous testosterone and how it may suppress sperm production and all that? So, yeah, absolutely. It is a kind of a, a concern for a lot of people, of course. So uh, the brain makes certain hormone chemicals and it pumps out two in particular called FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone, which also in women, uh, with women it makes the for fertilization with, with men, LH stimulates your testicles to produce testosterone. The FSH travels down to the testicles and to the, the tubules and helps create basically the sperm and the semen and everything else to allow your little swimmers to get to where they need to go. So they're made in the testicle and the set in the bat and the uh, epididymis and the, uh, or the seminiferous tubules and all these little structures and they get carried through to where they need to go. So the concern is that when guys take exogenous testosterone, of course, it over time, it can shut down that process. Your body senses, hey, I got plenty of testosterone. I don't need to make FSH and LH. It stops, which is true. And then basically that's what happens. Now, what's the consequence of that is that your body's not going to make any more or much less testosterone, but you're giving it, so that's fine. But you're not making the FSH, so that's why the sperm counts drop, you know, the, and everything else drops. So that's where the, the concern that you could be fertile. Now, it, yeah, it, it typically can happen, but it's more for a, the longer you're on. Now, a lot of, sometimes we'll give guys just a trial, right, for maybe months and until we correct the underlying. There might be an underlying issue why their testosterone is low. Maybe their gut was messed up. They were exposed to toxins. They got mold toxicity or whatever, and we fix it, and then we get them off the testosterone. Typically, they're going to be fine. It takes, you know, you know on a, it could be usually months, you know, several months to several years or more of continuous testosterone to really, per, you know, affect that fertility. So that's one concern. It's just like, oh, as soon as I take testosterone, bam, I'm infertile. It doesn't happen that way. It takes time and it can revert. Um, but even guys that are on it for a long term, I guess we'll get into this more later. You know, if you stop it, a lot of them will regain their fertility. But there's ways to augment that. We'll talk about that later. But that's kind of where that came from. It shuts down the production from the brain all the way down to the testicles and everything in between. Yeah, I think I think uh, there's 
there's men who have no idea what like potential side effects, I guess you can call it, of TRT, even though like a lot of them are, are very favorable, like, oh, you, you're going to have better body composition and all that stuff. Um, but this can be kind of like something that happens because um, it, from the production in the testicles that they think as soon as they come off of it also, they may actually become you know, fertile right away. And the way I explain it to men is that, you know, many of them have wives who have been on birth control or have a girlfriend or whatever who's been on birth control. And quite often when a woman comes off birth control, it's not like automatically she's able to get pregnant. A lot of women require a lot of time. A lot of time. Can you explain um, what the process is when a guy comes off or doesn't even come off because he can be fertile while on testosterone. And, and actually that's a big one that's, I'm tangenting here. Because a lot of doctors will pull men right off testosterone first thing before even trying any other interventions whatsoever. So if you could go into what your personal favorite intervention is, and then maybe what some of the other options are that guys have. Yeah, like you said, it, it takes time. So same with women, same with men, you stop the medication, your body will adapt, but it takes time. It, it Typically, we're talking months. It can take up to three, six months. But the good thing is the success. I mean, I've heard some reports saying as much as 90, 95% of guys will regain their fertility after maybe six months or maybe at the most 12 months. Um, obviously, there's a lot of guys who don't. But as you mentioned, um, there are some guys who are on testosterone, and they maintain their fertility no matter what. And that can happen for sure. Um, but, you know, for those guys that don't, I always – I always recommend to my, my patients that, you know, if, if there's any concern or question, you're going to, you may or may not have any more children. I recommend uh, before we start therapy, um, go bank your sperm just in case and get it frozen because there's, that's a distinct possibility that you lose your fertility and can't get it back. Even though statistically we'll probably be fine, but it's always good to, to, to cover your bets. Or if it's a younger guy, I might start them on something else instead of tests like Clomid or ACG, your testosterone boost and they maintain their fertility. But the guys that are on test, yeah, it can take, if they stop it, it will come back, but it takes time. So for me, there's many ways to do it in terms of strategy, but it really comes down to uh, the patient and their time frame. So if it's like, hey, doc, I want to I get pregnant in like three months, that's one scenario versus I got a year, maybe now, sometime in the next five years. That's a whole different scenario. Um, so tincture of time is always best. Just let things happen and go is the easiest way to go. But there's ways we can kind of speed that process up, and that might be adding – uh, so I don't know we can talk about in this now or later, I guess, what to what to give or to speed up that process. But uh, the bottom line is it, it takes time and, and, it, but it, and it, that, that timeline can be sped up a little bit. So let's let's describe. So say um, somebody's been on testosterone, I don't know, five years or whatever. And then all of a sudden they're a patient of yours and 40 year old man who decides, you know, what, I want to try and conceive. So coming into um, the. I guess you call it the three month period or whatever, the grace period where he has an idea of when they'd like to try to be able to have a baby. Uh, your first go-to would probably be HCG or Clomid. Um, HCG, for those listening, human chorionic gonadotropin, and that's the pregnancy hormone, right? Right. It's really found in women. So how does that work to help stimulate sperm production in guys? Yeah, so that's a, basically a luteinizing hormone analog. It stimulates your brain. It's, it's similar, basically, making your body make more of its own luteinizing hormone. And that's the first step in testosterone production. Luteinizing hormone is what tells your mitochondria to take cholesterol and turn that into pregnenolone, which is, then gets turned into DHEA and then into testosterone, et cetera. So it's maintaining those normal physiologic processes. So it's, it, Sometimes that's all that's needed. It, it'll stimulate both more of an LH, not so much FSH, but sometimes that's all you need just to kind of jumpstart the system. Um, so that's the easiest way to do is to uh, put put someone on HCG and then give it some time to work. Now, sometimes it will, as I mentioned, it'll get their, keep maintaining their testosterone, maintain their LH level, but their FSH doesn't go up. They're not making as much sperm. So sometimes you have to stimulate that directly too. And that's where something like Clomid comes in. Clomid works very nicely. Uh, also works up in the brain to stimulate testosterone production. It basically tells the, makes the body think that it's not, uh, you know, recept that's, that's stimulating down down regulating the receptors. It's not an estrogen blocker per se, but it makes the, the brain think it has to make more. So therefore, it turns on the luteinizing hormone, the FSH, to go down and make testosterone and make estrogen. Um, and sometimes with those two, that'll be enough to get what we call spermatogenesis or the making of the sperm and the testosterone back up to where it needs to be. And obviously you need those sperm and the fluid that, that, that it comes with 
to get pregnant. So, um, and usually that will do the trick. Um, there's other things that can be done. There's a, a one mother thing that can be done after that, but um, you know, we can give an actual uh, F, F, you can actually give F, FSH. It's a little more expensive and um, usually more of a shorter term thing, but that can be given if clomid does work. But typically between the ECG and the clomid, that's going to work pretty well. And how long on average do you think patients will take a, you know, I know you said some guys are three months, maybe shorter, but what is on average the length of time someone should expect to have enough sperm count? And what is that actual minimum that you need to have in order to start trying? Yeah, I think I think a good three to six months is kind of the average um, for most guys to see something happen um, in terms of numbers. I mean, you only need one, but um, in terms of how many you get, I don't know. It, it varies from guy to guy, but they're typically... If they've, they, maybe they've been tested or not, you know, and they've been found, hey, I've got nothing. I went and had my uh, semen analysis done. And there's nothing there. Okay, let's put them on a therapy, give it three to four months, and then retest. That's basically will be the next step. So give it some time, uh, get an analysis done and test, and then they'll see. And they'll, you'll see if you've got anything going. If it, there's still nothing, then we need to go add on another therapy or give it more time or both. And at what point would you have to have somebody come off testosterone for a little while when you've exhausted everything? Or is there a point before that? Um, yeah, it could be either, again, if you're, if you're finding someone who's in a hurry, like, Hey man, I want to do this and I want to get pregnant, get my wife pregnant in the next three or four months. Well, I'm going to tell them to stop the testosterone, add the ACG, add the clomid. Let's just, you know, pull out all the guns. Um, but if it's like, I got, you know, a year or two or three, then I'll say, okay, well add the ACG, maybe test in a couple months and then give and see what happens. If it's still not working. Okay. Now let's stop the test, keep the ACG test again. And then, you know, kind of, we have a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It was probably my phone crapping out again. All right. Um, I forgot where we were, but I, I was going to say, do you, so do they still like supply porn mags and stuff when you go give a sperm sample? Like is that, <laughs> is that the deal or they just give you movies or are you allowed to like look at Pornhub on the phone? I mean, nowadays, I'm curious. I've never been. I can't say. <laughs> Anyone um, out there have been, you know, I've heard there I've heard there are magazines, but then and nowadays I'm sure they probably let you take your phone and watch whatever you want to watch. I'm sure. Yeah, they have like they've got to have like tripods. You know, you set up like uh, Pornhub or just supply the the subscription and stuff. This is the way I'm demented in the, in the way I think. So they probably have like group like stripper poles and all kinds of toys. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I want to give a sperm sample. Damn. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> just what? Yeah, just to go see, just to have some fun. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll be like, I'm sorry, what? And I'll be like, you can't question that now. Nowadays, you can't question anything. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, what I was gonna say. So, um, there's uh So they were they were as far as contraception for men, they were looking to do like a male contraceptive pill a while ago, which I think they put away because that was testosterone in combination with progesterone, right? <laughs> And I think that they're trying to bring that to market. Do you remember whatever happened with that? I don't know. I'm glad they got rid of that, though, because that's what they used to give to, to guys like, you know, sex offenders. Stuff. They'd give massive doses of progesterone, and it would just, you know, shut everything down. They'd chemically castrate them. It's, it was terrible. They'd feel terrible. But there's um, this, this new stuff called basal gel, which sounds like something for the vagina, but it's not. It's for you guys. Um, and it's, it's supposed to take the place of a vasectomy and it's called, uh, it's called basal gel and they inject gel in the vas deferens. So the vas deferens take the sperm to travel up, um, to be, uh, e ejected. And, um, that's supposed to last like for a few years, at least it's in development now. And, and oh. they patented it in China, in, um, the U S and then somewhere else, but, it seems to be like an, it's a non-hormonal contraceptive uh, for guys because vasectomies are usually pretty permanent. I mean, you can reverse it, but it's like a big pain in the ass. So I wonder what, what that would do and what that would change because I was reading um, on the uh, pharmaceutical company's website and they were saying that a lot of this is based off the research for women coming off of birth control because of the side effects 
that have nothing to do with being on it for unplanned pregnancies. And I was like, finally, because as you know, you went to medical school, like it takes what, 70 years for shit to get into the medical <laughs> journals. So <laughs> when was birth control created? Like in the 30s? Long time ago, yeah. And, and now it's 2020. And now we're just accepting the fact that maybe gynecologists pushing all these methods is not the ideal health uh, path for these women. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's definitely picking up because there's a lot more women that I'm seeing that are on like, for example, have IUDs like uh, marinas are okay, but they can cause side effects too, like the copper IUDs and things like that. Right. Much safer. Um, vasectomies, of course, are always a good standby, but you know, can, you know, occasionally cause some cause some issues. So that makes sense. I'm curious to, to see the long term, see how that's going to play out too, in terms of any side effects or, or efficiency. Like I do a lot of like, at one of the clinics I work, we do a lot of vein surgery. Where we kind of seal off the vein mm. with the laser, but there's been a couple companies promoted like these, it's almost like a foam. It goes in there and it basically clogs it up. So I, I imagine it's probably the same thing. It's basically medication that clogs up the, the tubules. So nothing yeah. can through, you know what I mean? So and their claim is, you know, that it's appealing because it's reversible very easily. And, but yeah. that gel dissolves. But my question would be, how do you know when it dissolves? So right. a little bit of you... there. Yeah, like what if you have jack swimmers that just push through that? Like, come on. Yeah, we can get anyway. through that. Interesting. We'll see what well, happens. Big crowd tonight. So uh, thank you, everyone who joined. Um, any other, any other questions? Much. Did we cover everything? I think so. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, that's come up a lot. A lot. A lot of uh, a lot of people recently have been asking about the fertility issue. So I'm glad we went over that. If anybody has any questions about it, just fire off us a message on Instagram or and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll answer. I think it's mostly because of, of the lack of education from the public where same mm. with women, I, if I come off birth, birth control, or if I miss one pill or one dose of whatever, I'm automatically susceptible to pregnancy. Right. And on the other hand, like, you know, our, our friend Jim Brown, who's very open about the fact that he, he got his wife pregnant when he was on multiple things competitive doing competitive bodybuilding so you right. can actually take super physiological doses of testosterone plus other anabolics which should not have any sort of chance of being getting someone pregnant at all but then one can just sneak by i think that's the funny thing with with medicine anything's possible i i've yet to you know i i've uh, learned not to be surprised anymore anything anything can happen <laughs> true all right, cool. Well, next All week, right. we will, we'll let you guys know what our topic is because we base that off of a lot of the feedback we get. Um, as always, we do offer a combination consultation with both Eric and myself so you can get the best of both worlds. Um, we don't do it together. We do it separately to respect privacy of HIPAA, but the benefit is having a fitness professional and a physician who are both on the same page who respond and communicate and actually get shit done. Get shit so done. Our, uh, our man George is going to help us with that. Yeah, reach out if you message us on Instagram, guys. We're happy to do a uh, dual comment com, uh, consultation and uh, get a one-two punch. That's Nobody else is doing that. So let's come, That's come right. talk. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. Everyone have a good night. Bye, guys. <laughs>